So uh, this turns out to be um, a really uh, convenient thing to analyze in just about the same way that we did before. So I'm going to say for, um, uh, let's do Poisson Dictionary. And oh uh, gosh, let me think about this for a second. Uh, we just want, we want a, a fixed lambda. And then we want a low K and a high K. Low K is, um, so we're going to think about this like uh, the keys are the number of events on which we want to find the probability. And the lamb, uh, sorry, the value is the probability of that number of events occurring. So again, same, same idea. So I'm going to say for um, I in, actually let's do K in range, low K to high K plus one. And I'm gonna say D sub, well, so right, K is, K is not going to be, there aren't going to be multiple, it, K is gonna be unique, right? So I don't need to check for membership here. D sub K is gonna get Poisson of K. And we can just return D. And again, for K, V in Poisson, ICT, and let's use, uh, what did we use before? We were using 10. I think we were using 10. Um, 10 is not as interesting. Let's, let's say four. Uh, 10 actually sort of models closely binomial distribution. But let's say uh, low K is going to be, uh, let's do zero because that's the lowest K we can have. You can't have negative number of events. And let's do a high K of 30. And we'll print. Um, again, I'm just going to do an F string because it's simple. And I'll do key value. So we should see the probability for each number of events. If, OK, Poisson is missing K. Oh, Lambda. Am I not passing into Lambda here? Yeah, I am. Okay. Nope. Int object is not iterable. That's exciting. Dot items, right? Because it should, it should return a dictionary. And there we go. So, most probable event, it, uh, most probable number of events, most probable number of people walking through the doorway, if you want to think about it that way, is four. And uh, something I always find curious about Poisson, three and four have the same value, right? So um, if lambda is 10, 10 and nine have the same probability, um, which is kind of a cool, cool thing to notice. And we can kind of like look at this distribution as being, um, you know, it kind of uh, spikes up, right? It goes something like this and then has a low trail off to the right. So there's, there's a number of transformations we could do on Poisson, but um, I kind of want to you know, throw a couple of these problems out there at you. So what if, what if you um, hold K constant and you have a range for lambda, right? So, you know, you can imagine rewriting this where you put K here for lamb, and then you do low lambda, high lambda, and you just modify a few things in here, and you have a different dictionary that's telling you something different, right? Um, so there, there are a number of ways that you can transform this. Um, one of the, so this is a good question. What if you hold K constant and have a range uh, for Lambda. The other question I would ask is, um, what if you, or how, how do I say this? Um, how would you synthesize actual counts of events 
um, given these theoretical probabilities. So that's, that's a good question. And uh, I think it's such a good question that we wrote it into um, one of the interviews. So kind of a cool thing to know um, how to figure out. The other question might be, uh, and we didn't, we didn't include this in one of the interviews because it is a little bit harder, um, but given uh, a, uh, a sample of data, um, and let's say a sample of counts of occurrences, um, counts of occurrences is a little uh, vague here, uh, but uh, essentially like um, it's going to be the counts of the numbers of successes, right? So how many times did you observe uh, five people walking through the doorway, right? So that would be counts. So how, given a sample of counts of occurrences, how do you determine, and this is one of the really cool uh, things you can do in statistics, uh, how do you determine if uh, the distribution of events follows Poisson? Is it Poisson-like, right? Um, number 30, that, that, uh, that question on line 34, you do not need to know that for the technical point of view, but it's something to think about. And uh, I'm gonna answer Charles's question, uh, Charlie's question. Um, so it doesn't matter if 10 refers to minutes or hours or years, uh, Poisson still thinks 10 events is most likely. Yeah, totally. So the, um, the length of time, that window of time, or that volume of space or whatever it is, is implicit in the value of lambda. Uh, and if you look at the Wikipedia page, they, they kind of break it down that way. Um, you know, so uh, when we're asking, it, it's convenient, it's helpful when we ask these kinds of questions, right? Because here our window of time is 10 minutes. And uh, the question we're asking is for a window of time of 20 minutes. So we have to modify lambda in order to approach this 20-minute uh, window. 